Thanks, David, for an awesome uh, introduction. Um, so before I start talking, I'll actually introduce um, uh, the two people to actually come and sit with me. Um, of course, you've already uh, heard from Trisha, our founding managing partner, and basically, you know, she's just a mom who wants to be able to have conversations with her kids to do with the technology space, and she wants to understand it a, a little bit more. I think it's important, um, it's a generational thing, that from generation to generation, there are certain things that you don't understand of your kids. And if you're even, even able to understand it on a basic level, then you can have those conversations with your kids and you can actually trust and entrust your kids to be on the digital space a little bit more. So, of course, I'd like to introduce Trisha again to come and sit up here with me. Uh, Trisha, the managing partner of Bolt 28. <laughs> Do it. You hear some, <laughs> and of course, um, one person who really again doesn't need in any introduction. Um, we thought long and hard about who would represent uh, our company. We wanted to make sure that when we launched this company, we wanted someone who has the same values as us, who really wants to help grow sport and awareness um, across many different mediums and many different sports, and. Of course, someone who really just champions the everyday Filipino. And of course, when you hear about someone championing the everyday Filipino, one of the names that comes up is this man who is now our brand ambassador, and you'll hear from him in just a little bit. But please, uh, a round of applause as I introduce him, James Deacon. And later, James will join, join us in a tree or so. Um, Yay. Yeah, not a bad looking uh, panel anyway. <laughs> okay, so why are we here? Why are we even talking about this? Well, Bolt 28 is a regional sports marketing agency. Now, for my portion, I'd like to start by saying in 1972, there was a couple of dozen people who gathered at Stanford University to play a video game. They played it on one of the early data processes back in 1972. That computer was about the size of that wall. Wow. That's how big it was. Now they're like tiny. Now these people were competing in a video game called Space War. Does anybody remember Space War? Anybody alive when Space War was around? <laughs> Nobody wants to put their head on, right? <laughs> Google it, guys. Google Space War. So they competed for this game. And the prize was a year's subscription to Rolling Stone magazine. Whoa. Wow, right? Oh, cool. Last year, 2019, the international 2019 Dota 2 competition, the winning team, consisting of five members, won 34.3 million US dollars. Wow. Huge, right? No, sorry, they won 15 point. Uh, 15.6. The entire prize pool was 34 mil. Crazy, right? Why do I mention that? Not just because of the money. Not just because the winners took home more prize money than the Masters, took home more prize money than Wimbledon. But I mention that as a reference point as to how big this sport is. And as Filipinos, if we really, really want to compete on the world stage, we need to be able to make sure that our athletes are at that level and giving them all the support. Now, esports, um, sorry, Boom, if we go to the, the next slide, uh, the next one there. I really don't need to probably explain this to half the room, but just to give, yeah. <laughs> for the parents, uh, to give a little bit of background of esports. Esports, simply put, is competitive video gaming. Now, who plays esports? Who, who who actually plays video games here? Definitely all the kids. Yeah, probably more. Oh, yeah, well, of course, yeah. I mean, another teenager over here. <laughs> so, competitive video gaming is a huge business. Right now, I think esports is about one point eight billion dollar industry, and that's just the sport alone. That's not even including the video games themselves. Who's heard of a little movie called The Avengers? Yeah, right? What's that? 
The video games. What, uh, sorry, what what is what is uh, what is what is Avengers? I've never heard of it. Huh? I've never heard of it. What is it? It's a movie, right? Come on, burger. Yeah. It's a, okay. it's a movie. It's a franchise. Avengers. Yes, the franchise. It is a movie franchise which everybody knows, but not a lot of people know that a little game called Grand Theft Auto V outsold that in their opening weekend. It made over six billion dollars in revenue and that again is just to give you an idea of how big this industry is now why are we even talking about esports bolt 28 believes in growing sports not just traditional sports that really deserve our backing but also non-traditional sports as esports of course as i mentioned if we're not backing our athletes if we're not backing these types of events then simply we won't be able to keep up with the rest of the world now, in terms of media, we already have competitions, we already have some uh, such things called uh, the Nationals, and I think many people are aware that in the last SEA Games, eSports was actually a competitive sport there. And we're happy that, um, of course, the Philippines basically dominated that. And we need that. We need Filipinos to perform on the world stage at that level and keep on doing that. And it's really, as Trisha said, it's not just for us, but it's really for the future. It is a sport. These guys are athletes. Even if they're not, you know, if, even if they're not the seven foot tall type athletes, right? There is cer a certain mental and certainly physical fitness that these athletes can have. Now, on to the next slide. In terms of the media again, when we talk about a viable business for people, traditional sports we know tend to be on the decline when it comes to viewership and revenues. But in actual fact, you have venues and basically being sold out, 50,000 capacity venues being sold out in esports. The League of Legends opening ceremony was able to outsell their venue. And that's how big the sport is. People are basically going out in droves. Now, the reason why people are going out in droves is, if we go to the next slide, there we go. Now, my last thing uh, I'll talk about esports. A lot of people might ask the question, why is it so big? Or why is it growing? Or why is it one of the leading trends of the world? Why is it one of the biggest businesses in media and entertainment now? Simply put, before, it was purely entertainment. People would go along to arcades, play Pac-Man, enjoy themselves, catch up with their friends, eat, and then have to go home at the end of the day. It was purely for entertainment. Now, because of technology, we are able to actually connect online. We are literally able to create communities online and offline of people who are enthusiastic about games. The community was always there, right? The community was always there. They may have been playing video games in their parents' basement. But now, because of technology and that ability to communicate and the speed of the internet, we're able to actually have all these esports and all these uh, competitions happening online simultaneously, and it's now one of the hugest businesses in the world. It went from entertainment, you just play with your friends. Of course, now, these are our Michael Jordans of the current time. 